No, happy new year. Happy new year. Hey, <laughs> I hope you guys are excited. Uh, let's see. We're approaching 300 on the call. There's still a lot of people coming in. Put in the chat where you're at, where you're from, if you're excited about <laughs> 2023. Yes. I got to say, this is the most excited I've been in a long, long, long time. Guys, boom. See, now we're approaching 400. We'll let that keep climbing. Um, I was going to kind of start this out with uh, what books I'm reading right now, because I figured there would be a lot of people coming in a couple minutes after we started. So while we're kind of waiting on everybody to come in, I wanted to share. Number one, I went into Zero to Diamond and added links to a lot of books. Not a lot. Um, the books I'm reading right now and also the ones I suggest, if you haven't, guys, if you if you haven't, um, you know, read the books that I always suggest, which is The Slight Edge, which is here, Jeff Olson. This is my number one book all time. And, uh, of course, my book, List to Last. Um, but I added a couple of new ones there. Some I read last year. Some. Um, that I'm reading right now. Okay. So one of my new favorites is this one right here, Pitch Anything. This is the one I'm having my my team read. Uh, we do a book every month. Um, this is an amazing book, honestly. I'm 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 inspired and I'm just soaking up so much out of this. Um, Pitch Anything by Oren Claff. I highly suggest this. I'd love to read it kind of as a group. If you guys are looking for a book to read in January, you want to read a book, pitch anything. Um, that This is one of my new faves that I'm going to start recommending. Still a lot of people coming in. <laughs> We're approaching 500. I haven't read this yet, but I've heard all about it. It's called Building a Story Brand. This is about clarify your message so customers will listen. I'm really excited about this. And I think this is something everybody needs because um, it, it's clarifying your message so customers will listen, okay? And that that's what you need in, in your business, right? You, you need to be able to build your story. Everybody has a unique story and you need to be able to build that story in a way that your customers will listen. I haven't read this one yet. This is going to be my second book of the year. I'm starting out with Pitch Anything, which I'm halfway through and blown away. And then I'm going to move right over to Story Brand. Okay. Um, I linked a couple in the 60-Day Challenge, but Elevate is a really short book by Robert Glazer. I love this book. It's really short, easy to read, super inspiring, really good stuff. And another one that's a little longer, but is incredible, is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Wow. I mean, wow. That one will really open your eyes up to some stuff. All right. So, again, I was just wasting a little time for people to come in, throwing you guys some value right off the bat. Still people pouring in. Let me know where you guys are at. Let me check the comments. Getting close to 500. Let's see, where's the chat? Chat. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Okay, everybody's saying where they're from, but are you excited? <laughs> are you are you excited? Um, today I'm gonna go through just a couple of graphs and some market statistics and stuff just to kind of help you guys understand why I think the way I think about the next six months of the market. Um, and so I, you know, if you haven't seen this information already, it's going to be super beneficial to kind of help you put things into perspective. But remember, guys, you know, whenever I throw out these predictions and stuff, it it literally means nothing. And the cool thing about what I do is I try to put you, I don't try, I do. I mean, the the reason I say try is because I don't know if you're going to execute or not. That's up to you. I can't, you know, do the work for you. 
But if, but at, at least I can go to sleep at night knowing that I did my part to put you in a position where you win either way. You know, if you go out there and build your business the way that I'm telling you to build your business, there's no way that nothing happens. No, there's no scenario where you lose. You just win, win, win. That's all. The predict the predictions don't mean anything. But it's cool to kind of see what the trend is, <clears throat> where we feel like the market is heading, and where the opportunities might be. Because that that is a that is how you um blow past your competition, let's say. Right. Because you guys know, like for me, competition doesn't exist. Yeah. So, so, but let's take that out of the equation for just a second. A lot of us want to be number one agents in our MLS, the number one agent in your entire market. And so that's where you can take things to another level is when you start to pay attention to actual market trends and try to be ahead of the curve on a lot of this stuff, instead of just kind of reacting, you know, to the market as it happens. You're in a position where, okay, there's a good chance this is going to happen. So here's how I'm going to develop my business plan, right? And and the the small chance that what I'm saying doesn't happen, it's okay because within my execution, I win no matter what. But if it hits big, then we I could literally propel myself to the very top of the market. If that makes sense. Still people coming in. We're approaching 600. I'm just going to dive in here. So first off, um, you know, I don't know if you guys are doing this or not, but, you know, our group and I would say everyone is doing the 60 day challenge right now, especially if you've never been a part of the 60 day challenge. Right. So let me take you there. You're going to go to zero to diamond. Dot com. And when you log in, boom, here we are. It's a news feed. This is a social media platform where you post, you can friend and follow people on this platform. There's over 18,000 approaching 19,000 members uh, on this platform as we speak. This thing super lags whenever, whenever I'm live. <clears throat> but you can create groups. Um, you can go to the different groups of your area or the weekly email group and all this stuff. Okay. This is where you can see all the members. You can search members. If you're looking for a specific ZTD member, you've got a referral in a different state, go right here and search them. You can search the city, state, whatever, and search a ZTD member. And then you can message them right on the platform, right? Or that it has their information there. You can reach out to them. Um, so that hey, guys use this platform to collaborate with each other. And it's going to do nothing but grow. A um, hundred or so agents are joining a day, and we're this close. We've been working on it for twelve months, but we're this close to uh, to, to launching an app that'll be on you know iOS and Android for you guys to download, and it'll be right there as an application versus just a website. So it's been a grueling process to try to make this an application. All right. Um, but we're almost there. You'll have your newsfeed, members, groups, uh, courses, and events. So let's move over to courses real quick. And I just want to kind of blow through this really quickly for those that aren't familiar. And then I want to move on to the market stats. So I'm going to give you guys some uh, some data, some charts, and some opinions. Let me see. Mute. Boom. Ah, this thing is super lag whenever I'm screen sharing give it just a second let's see where are if we five turn your camera on off i mean if you turn off, your camera, okay. off, that camera helps. off cool let me try that let me refresh let's see if that works No, I don't know what the deal is there. Let me open it up one more time. If that doesn't work, I'll move right into the market stats, which are just pictures on my computer. It's not a website, so I don't have to worry about it. Huh, I don't know what's happening there. 
all right, we'll we'll come back to it if I see that that I don't know what's what's happening there. Let's see. I'm going to bring my picture back. We'll see. I'll keep an eye on that. All right. So I'm going to dive into this, these market stats with you um, and kind of walk you through this. You can kind of see what's happening in the market. And I definitely want to take some questions. And if you guys have anything on your mind or anything you want to add to the conversation, I definitely want to give you that opportunity here in just a second as we approach 600 on the Zoom call. Um, so you got if you've been paying attention to my content, I guess you 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 should know exactly how I feel about where we're going uh, in the market. The market is a hundred percent normalizing. We're entering into a, what is a normal market, which is four and a half to five million sales, um, where it's a pretty balanced market between buyers and sellers. We'll see how prices perform this year. Um, you know, I, I think we'll be up, honestly, but we'll see. Um, somewhere around close to flat. But what's interesting is this. I'm gonna I'm gonna work through these uh, these pictures. So this is inflation. This is this is inflation, right? This this pink faded line, and then this darker line is mortgage rates, right? Incredibly correlated, incredibly correlated. And you see how inflation dipped down there towards the end and so did 30 year fixed and i can't think of a guru there's not a guru on earth that doesn't say that um inflation is going down this year and so i mean it doesn't take a rocket science to realize that as inflation does ease down so will 30 year fixed listen back to my point it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if rates go to 10 percent right now guys please understand that that it doesn't matter if rates go to 15 percent doesn't matter that doesn't matter right it, it how the market would react to a 10 to 15 percent 30 year fixed um would be an opportunity for you because if that happened honestly prices would definitely crash right if that happened that would be a moment that prices definitely crashed and think about how easy it would be to sell properties for half price 40 percent lower 30 percent lower Oh, there'll be less buyers. Dude, that's true. Um, but they're going to be buying, right? Well, there's less buyers now than there was six to eight months ago. Um, it's a circle of life, right? It's human nature. It's uh, mother nature. Nothing you could do about it. All right. Look at this. This is just more data to support the fact that interest rates are going to ease down. Um, and it doesn't matter if it do. Who cares? I don't, but it's. I'm, but I'm telling you this because it's cool to be in the position where you have a handle on this, not because this matters to your success. It, it, it's just good to have it because if you can be three steps ahead of the rest of the agents, if you can be three steps ahead of, say, 95% of the agents in your market with understanding how shifts and cycles in the market works, you could be in the position to... Um, surpass a lot of these agents in terms of the rankings in MLS. That's what I want to see. I want to see you guys' rank in MLS continue to, to move up into that top 10 range, into that top five range, into that very top range, um, number one in your MLS. That's what I want to see for a lot of you. And there's so many agents in the Zero to Diamond uh, network who are who have become through zero to diamond top 10 top five and even number ones several look at this this is the market this is mortgage rates and recessions okay mortgage rates and and recessions look at there down 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 mortgage rates went down in every recession so Everyone, just about everyone I know, all the gurus, all the networks, all everybody says we're, you know, heading into a recession. It's good for mortgage rates, just according to history. Just another data point, just another data point that shows that we're headed towards lower rates. Okay, prices, right? This is prices through recessions. 
The dark areas are recessionary periods. Look at prices. Up, up, up and away. There's only one right there, right? And there's one in the 90s. I want to say maybe right here where you saw it dip a little bit right there. And we see the headlines right now. There's a headline right now, I put it on Instagram just about an hour ago, that said that, you know, U.S. suffering. U.S. is suffering because this is the, the second largest price decrease since the World War II. Well, yeah, there's only been three, right? 2008, and then right here in, in early 90s. See how insignificant that one was in the 90s? And then we have this one, which depending on who you're talking to, we're down 3%, 5%, 7%, right? We got to get down, we got to get down like, larger than 20 something percent to erase the the pre-pandemic uh pricing gains from from pre-pandemic like 20 something percent okay but i'm going to show you in just a second here where it, there, it's going to be really hard to cross even get close to that threshold we're approaching 700 on the zoom call today um let me take a moment of of gratitude uh, for you guys for being here and spending time with me. Uh, I, I love you guys. I, I can't say that enough. Moving on here. This is very interesting. This is basically supply and demand. The orange is new new builds, uh, you know, completions of new builds. And the blue there is demand, right? Um, so you see back in 04, 05, 06. And when you get into 06, 07, 08, look how much more supply the orange line than we had of demand, the blue. Look at that. Look at the gap. You come to today, you come into today's market and you see we have way more demand than we have supply. Right? Demand is almost up there with 2004, 05. Not quite. Not quite. But it's up there. Um, but look at look at supply. Right? It's it's ridiculously out of whack. And that's what's gonna that listen, guys, this is what's preventing us from going into a huge pricing um crash. Right? If we had an oversupply right now, we would be hurting right now. It's not the case. And when I say hurting, I'm just saying price is coming down. I'm not talking about your business would be hurting. Please understand that if that happened and prices came down, we had a pricing crash, you would crush it. Just to make things clear to you, this doesn't have any, none of this has anything to do with your success, right? The only thing that has something to do with your success is if you're going to go out there and talk to and try to meet five new people in your market a day, five plus a day, add them to your database and then put them into your marketing machine and build that up to thousands of people over the next three to five years. That's all that matters. And nothing that the market's doing prevents you from doing that day to day. It could be the most depressing market in the world. You're going to go out there and talk to people and get to know them and add them to your database, see what you can do to help them. We got to quit going after listings, guys, right? And you got to think, I'm going after people. When I talk to a prospect, I'm not trying to, I've had this conversation like three or four times in the past couple of days with, in the, in my, in my DMs with people talking about, you know, expired listings or for sale bounders and stuff like that. And I'm like, listen, I, I'm not trying to list that house. And that's why, that's why I, all the expired, not all, a lot of expireds I did business with, they bought something from me. Every single time I call expireds, it seems like every single time I run into a builder or a developer and like they want to do business with me. And I think most agents wouldn't even find out that that person was a builder or developer because they're so focused on trying to list that expired that they don't even have like a conversation with the person to try to dig deeper into what they have going on and what you can do to help them and stuff like that. They just kind of are so focused on just getting the listing and I'm, I'm quite the opposite. I'm trying to use the listing as an excuse to call them with every situation. I just want to talk to someone and get inside their head. 
and allow them to open up to me. I want to create a safe place for them to open up about what they're trying to do. So we need to start going after people versus, uh, you know, listings. Th now, this is where things get super interesting, right? This is my favorite part right here. If you look at, uh, you know, inventory, right? So, you know, we see inventories coming down, you know, November 21 is as far back as this chart goes. November 21, and we're we're coming into 22. You see, it's just coming down, coming down. And now it's coming back up with uh, interest rates. As interest rates came back up, right, things started to, you know, we, we saw more inventory hit the market, which, by the way, in 2020, I said, hey, we're going to have that moment where everybody, where all the sellers realize this is it, and they're going to flood the market. That's what happened. They flooded the market, overpricing listings because they were dreaming. They were thinking that it was still 2021, but it wasn't. And we saw that influx of listings that were overpriced. And then, um, you know, things started to level out as people realized they weren't going to sell it for last year's prices. And uh, then they either had to lower their price or take it off the market, basically. And so now we're getting to where we've got some pretty good inventory out there. You know, but inventories come back down. You guys see right here in August, it peaked. Right? In August, it peaked. And now we're down from that point. You now you see this wave like, uh, you know, shape. All right. Now look at this. This is going to blow your mind if you haven't seen this. Okay. Look at every year. Now this is every year. You see how it goes up? It like shoots to the moon. Like it's almost like straight up and then guess what? Straight down plummets. Right. Same thing the next year. Straight up plummets, straight up plummets all the way every year. Straight up plummets, straight up plummets. Even in the year, even in these years, 2020 and 21, the years of low inventory. Inventory still shot up like a rocket. This is this is what people don't want to talk about right here. This is what this is what the media, this is what people don't want to acknowledge. Real data. They don't want to acknowledge real data. Every year it shoots up and plummets. Now look at where we are here. It shot up, right? And it shot up a little more than normal. It shot up about level actually with last year's peak. See that? Level. And now what? See the trend? Coming down, every single year, it shoots up and plummets this time of year. And we're already in the cycle right now of it downtrending. And you probably, you guys have probably already seen, um, you guys have probably seen that in your markets with inventory coming down. I know I have. Uh, inventory is getting tighter. It's not getting looser. It's getting tighter. Yeah, we've seen an influx. That was sellers. That was unrealistic sellers flooding the market, trying to catch that last little bit of the, the tidal wave of the market surge, try to get that high price. Honestly, sellers who didn't even care to sell, they just would sell if, right? You guys know the sellers. I would sell if. Th those, those sellers aren't serious right now. They could change their mind tomorrow, but they're not serious right now. Sometimes they turn into a deal and I'll list them all day long, but I know who I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with somebody who's not necessarily motivated. But this is what we're looking at. We're looking at we're looking at inventory coming down right now, plummeting. Now, think about it. Inventory just historically speaking, hey, who not this could be this could be a uh this could be an off year. Inventory could go up. I'm just throwing that disclaimer out there. Interest rates could go up. I'm throwing that out there. Inflation could go up. I don't know what's going to happen, but based on the trends, based on history, based on everything that we're seeing right here, right? It there's a good chance. Remember what I said earlier, right? You put yourself in positions where you say, okay, there's a good chance that this is going to happen. Let me put myself in position to capitalize if it happens. And also whatever I'm executing on, I win even if it doesn't happen. That's the key right there to to one of the big keys to really moving up in the rankings in your local MLS, understanding that concept right there.
So right now, there's a good chance that inventory is going to go down. Interest rates are also going to come down. And buyers are sitting on the fence waiting on rates to come down. As they do, what do you think is going to happen? They're all going to come out at the same time fighting over the same house because there's not going to be any inventory. And we're going to be right back to where we started a couple of years ago with no inventory and high demand. This is an illustration of inventory, you know, the inventory story. This is the inventory story. Um, this, you know, the peak was 2007. Here we are, 2022. All right, about a third of the inventory with 50 million more people in the, U in the U.S., 30 to 50 million, whatever the number that the population has grown since 2007. We have tens of millions of more people and a third of the inventory. Sounds like a problem, right? And if you look at it only based on active listings, so the 1.2 million is all of them, including pendings. You take the pendings out, we got 750,000 listings in a country of 330 million people. And we're half of what we were. Listen, half. Right now, we're half of where we were pre-pandemic or, in well, yeah, pre-pandemic, 2017, 18, 19, we're half. And, it's, and just based on history every year, inventory is about to go down and get worse. What? Do what? So I don't know if you guys have seen all this or thought about this in this way. And, of course, this is so general because it's the entire country. Your market is so localized. Do not, do not share general information with your clients on your weekly emails. Share with them local information, please. Go into your MLS, create the data on your own. I can, I can show you really quickly how I do that. I'll do that right now. Let me get through these slides and I'll hop into my MLS and I'll just show you really quickly. Just a quick little, you know, synopsis of what I do there. But you need to share and talk about local data, please. The generic stuff is not is not, you know, helps a little, but until you're giving them really specific local information, ugh, it's hard. It's hard to get them to listen. And to really think, oh, this, this agent is really going above and beyond, right? They're giving me the real stuff, stuff I want to know about. Look at the foreclosure activity from 2010, which was the peak, to now, okay? We're not fixing to see a wave of foreclosures, ladies and gentlemen. It's not going to happen. And one reason is this right here, equity. Equity, the average equity in homes is 58%. That's ridiculous. And if prices remain flat, we're still looking at 58%. If they even if they go down a little, we're still looking at what 50%, 40%. Prices have to go down below what somebody owes on their house to start short the short sale process. And then they have to get into trouble. So a lot of things have to happen for there to be like a ton of short sales. Um, and, and I think the same goes for foreclosures. Getting close to 700 in the Zoom. Okay, let me let me move over to MLS. Well, oh, we might hit, we may run into a problem with. Let me see if this works. Okay, MLS is working. Okay, so here's my MLS. All right, I'm going to go to search. All right, so I'll just do like a, a quick little something something here, okay? Let's see. Let's just do like uh, closed. So I can pill pendings, actives. Like there's so much data right there in your MLS. Let's do closed. Let's do condos. All right, let's do... Uh, Let's do all of last year, let's just say. Okay, I'm just throwing this in here just to really quickly to just show you guys how easy it is 
to do this. And even if your MLS doesn't do some of this stuff, um, you know, automatically, which it should. Okay, right here, I have all the condos that closed last year. All right. Um, so I can put these in alphabetical order according to complex there, right? Or I can put them in alphabetical order uh, according to complex, uh, uh, according to, you know, when they closed or whatever. But right here, this data right here is very interesting, right here. And you guys probably can't see this. I'm gonna try to zoom in a little. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, you can see that there were 2,200 that closed. Uh, days on the market, the average was 35 days. Um, uh, you know, the 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 high listing price was three million. The the sole price, or well, the the high sole price was three million. Uh, the low was 32,000, the average. So I've got the average, then I have the median, then I have total. That's all incredible data right there. And what I can do is go back and search. If I go right here and I just go back to criteria and I change my dates, I don't touch anything. I just change my dates um, right there. Then, I, then I'm looking at last year's data. Then I'm looking at the same data from last year and I can compare and then I can start saying, oh, well, you know, I can I can create a narrative and actually write an email out about that. Then you can get into homes and you can get into specifics. There's so much stuff within your MLS. Um, OK, let's see if I can get in here. See what happens. So far, so good. Uh, it's, I bet it. No, here we go. Okay, so I added all these courses. Circle prospecting to 100 deals a year. Crush it on social media for real estate agents, new real estate agents. Of course, we have the 60-day challenge. I made a course just for my scripts, so they're easy to find. Start your weekly email. There's a two-day cold calling tutorial where I made live calls. And then when with new and old expires, if we pop over to the 60 day challenge, if it'll let me, there we go. It's all laid out here for you. Intro, this, this gets into your business plan. Um, you know, there's the video, if you guys didn't see that live where I went through the business plan, you can download the, the workbook right here to, you know, map out how much you want to make, how many transactions you need to to close, but then it goes week by week. Week one is your sphere of influence. You have some material, some courses, some uh, modules there. Uh, week two is circle prospecting, philosophies. Week three, uh, expireds and lead gen focuses. Um, branding um, is week four. Then you start the 28 day challenge, which is the last 28 days of the the 60 days, right? So everyone is starting that today, kind of going through the material. There's so many golden nuggets throughout this and the other courses, all right? Um, a couple other things I wanted to get into before I open it up to you guys with Q&A and all that good stuff was um, real estate investing. Um. It's funny because I don't hear any real estate coaches that coach real estate agents talking about real estate investing. Let's see, let me, there we go. Um, and I wanna open up that conversation, you know, publicly for you guys so I can start, you know, trying to push you guys towards picking up a rental property here, picking up a rental property there, because that's the end game for you guys. We're not going to sell till the day we die. I've seen a lot of agents sell till the day they die. And it's not it's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. And I don't I don't want that for myself. That's why I got into social media, but not everybody can do what I did on social media. 
I lost $100,000 for two years, spending 80% of my time on it, neglecting my multi-million dollar businesses. And I was like, what am I doing here? This is crazy. But it did pay off because I had vision and I was able to work through um, I was able to work through that pain, let's just say, to get to the point where I'm now, where I have really good momentum. I'm actually making money on that side of it. Uh, but not everybody can do that. But what is practical, right, for a real estate agent? What is practical for every real estate agent to be the end game where you can step out of sales? Okay. If you want to go con the content route, you know, become an influencer and, you know, do I'm more than happy to help you do it. It's just, I think one out of a thousand people can actually accomplish that. But I think a thousand out of a thousand can go buy rental properties and build a rental portfolio. Um, and then, you know, be in a position to step out of sales, you know, 10, 15 years down the road. Now, what's interesting, and I just want to say this on, on, you know, as far as getting into your first rental, a lot of people look at their first rental and say, oh, well, I'm only going to make $200 a month. No, you're going to make $200 a month but you're also paying the debt down. You're also getting depreciation to write off on your taxes and you're getting any appreciation that that property produces over the next 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You can pass that along to your family. This is generational wealth we're talking about. And most real estate agents aren't even thinking about this. You're not even thinking about end game. We need to think about the end game now. And you guys need to be investing now, right? And, and just get started. Buy your first rental property. Save up for a down payment and go buy one. And then have a goal maybe to buy one a year, maybe two a year. Get to where you're buying multifamily. You're buying duplexes and fourplexes, commercial, whatever you want to buy, whatever you get into at that point. But buy a property and have a plan to buy one or more properties every year for the next 10 years. Boom. You actually have something because look at what has what it has appreciated to. Look at what it's paid down to, what you owe compared to what it's worth now. At that point, you can take you can refi cash refi out, take out a hundred thousand tax free, two hundred thousand tax free. It's not a taxable event, and then it's still cash flowing. You still own it. It's still appreciating. It's still paying down the new debt. You can pass this along to your children's children's children. You can't build a sales business and pass that down to your children's children's children. When you die, the sales business is over. That business is dead. But we aren't thinking about this. So I want to I want to be one of the ones that loudly says, "Hey guys, where you're selling real estate, how about buying a few pieces of real estate?" I think it's incredibly important, guys. Um I want to see you become a top you know, a top tier agent in your market, but I also want to see you guys be in a position where you don't have to sell till the day that you die, which I've seen, I've seen happen several times. Um, let's see what else that I want to mention for you guys today. And I hope this has been super helpful for you to kind of put things into perspective and realize how incredible this year is going to be. Um, my events this year, I'm doing, I've got three workshops lined up, one in Orlando, one in Gulf Shores. Let's see. Let me mute you. Bam. Um, all day workshops. Come spend a day with me and work out in the gym. I'm going to cover how to become number one in your market. I'm going to cover social media, everything, all the little hacks and every little, all my entire process. And also real estate investing, buying your first rental property, expanding your portfolio, syndication of big deals. Um, those are going to be incredible events. So all those events can be found at zero to diamond.com slash events. You're muted. We can't hear you, Ricky. Yeah, we lost you, buddy. How about now? Yeah, now yeah, we, we got can. you back. Good. Okay, good. I just, back. I'm, I wasn't muted. I just muted and unmuted. And now I'm back. It's, anyway, it's called, it's called Zoom. Yeah, Zoom. I love Zoom. Hey, it's better than most of them. I'll tell you that. I was on a couple of them last week and it's like geez man this technology is something else but um yeah i'm gonna be in vegas next week at ryan pineda's event i would love to see any of you guys there 
Uh, I'm going to be in Long Island, the Orlando event, Gulf Shores. I'm putting one together in Chicago. Um, so moving around a lot, trying to do a workshop somewhere in the country every month for you guys. So um, trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, listen, I, I could get into a lot of specific stuff that you guys should be thinking about and doing, but everything's right there in the 60 days. Everything's right there in the, in the courses on Zero to Diamond. And guess what? It's all 100% free. So you can go there and I've poured everything I could out of my brain into those courses for you to go and just soak up all those golden nuggets and kind of use them to mold your own business and mold your own processes and mold your own systems to go out there and scale. So I don't want to make this a full like training, um, teaching you all the micro details of everything. That's what's going to be on Zero to Diamond or that's what's going to be at my workshops. What I wanted to do today was say, hey, read some books, right? Understand the market is going to be incredible and that it has nothing to do with your success anyway to go out there and create five new friends a day, put them in your weekly email system and go crush it over the next three to five and buy a bunch of rental properties. That's really all I wanted to say today. So I'll open it up to you guys. If you have any questions, put your hand up on Zoom if you do want to ask a question or, or speak. And I'm um, happy to, to bring you in. Go ahead, Stacy. Stacey, you there? Yes, sorry, I was on mute. Um, when are you planning to come to Chicago? March 8th is what we're shooting for. When? March 8th. All right. Okay, that was my question. <laughs> we're over here. It's not 100%. I mean, it's pretty much 100%, but um, we're still finalizing everything. So I haven't been awesome. able to like send out a link. Awesome. Thank but, you. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, Praga. Hey, Ricky. First hey. of all, thank you for having all of us here. It's a wonderful meeting. Um, always look forward to you. Oh, you're on mute now. You muted yourself. You're you're muted. Is, there you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 So first of all, thank you. And second, I'm looking forward to meeting you when you come to New York on the 19th. Yeah. Very excited. It's going to be a really Very excited. good event. It's going to be a yeah, really good I'm looking good forward event. to that. And yeah. um, I want to get into uh, investing. Um, and I want to learn how to invest in rental properties without investing a lot of money from my own pocket. Like how to do that? Well, I think the first thing is, is to actually buy some properties with your own money first. Okay. Um, because you don't want to take somebody else's money when you're inexperienced and go lose that money, right? Or get in a bad situation, right? You don't want to manage other people's money when you don't know how to manage your own money. So okay. you really need to get in there and kind of own some of your own properties first. There's there's creative ways to um, to go out there. You should talk to your lender and and look okay. for creative ways to get in for low down payments, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and good deals on the uh you know, on, on the, the loan, the loan product that you use, talk to, you know, three or four or five different bankers and lenders and loan officers and LOs and try to find really good, you know, a uh, fit for you as far as what type of loan package that you use. But listen, um, when I bought my first rental, I saved up, you know, for a down payment and I bought my first rental myself. You know, did it again. I, you know, bought that one. Then I saved up money for my second one. Then I saved up money for my third. Right. Um, okay. So, we, we, you know, these people that go out and they um, they, you know, they're putting no money down and all this stuff. Um, they're, you know, they're 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 taking investors on. And they're raising money, you know, maybe from an aunt or an uncle or, you know, a colleague or something like that. Um, you know, I I was never comfortable with that. Um you know, until I became experienced enough that I felt like I really could take someone's money and go multiply it for them, which I, at this point, am, you know, very confident in my ability to take other people's money and go multiply it for them. But if you're not to that level, then I don't suggest doing that. Okay, go to you. 
Yeah, it's okay. Listen, you. listen. You know why people? No, no. Don't it's go it's on... important to hear from you. It's very important to hear from you because I'm hearing with so many different people talking about investment that you can invest and buy property even if you don't have a penny in your pocket. Yeah. So how do yeah. you do that? There has to be some catch. There has to You're, be something. Yeah. You're taking money from other people and going and investing it and hoping that you can find a return. And you know you should do some deals on your own first. You know. Um, I'm going to be doing like this year, I'm going out to buy a hundred million dollars worth of apartment complexes, right? I'm going to be syndicating those deals where a lot of you guys can actually invest with me in those properties, but I'm, I'm a whole nother level because I'm going to go out and I'm, I've turned down so many deals because when I do a deal like this, the people that invest with me in this deal, this is going to be the kind of property that, that they are proud to own, right? They, 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 they go there, they walk the property and they're like, wow. You know, th this is something I'm very proud to own, right? And so um, when you get to that level, then you can start taking, you can start investing, you know, money for people. But in the beginning stages, and the reason why people don't go out and buy rental property, and this is why, this is why a lot of people don't. Why? Because it's not sexy. If you buy a rental house and you're making $200, like I said earlier, a, a month, you're like, oh, all this work for $200. No. Appreciation, depreciation, uh, principal, uh, you know, payoff, you know, and the 200, um, you know, even if you break, even if you go negative a year because the AC went out and you spend your, all your profit on AC, you're still ahead big time, right? It's monopoly, ladies and gentlemen, right? It's just like monopoly. The more properties you own, the more prime properties you own, then the better off you're going to be. But this is a slow, this is how you get rich slow, ladies and gentlemen. And so it's not sexy. It's not fast. It's not overnight. And so that's why a lot of people kind of put it on the back burner. But I'm telling you, you need to start right now, right? You need to start right now. And, and this is how you start. You save up money for a down payment and you go buy your first one on your own. You buy a small property. The first one I bought was $68,000. And now I, I still own it. It's paid off. It's worth over 200 and I rent it for a thousand bucks a month. It's a one bedroom. I lived there for two years before I moved on to another rental property. Right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, good question. Um, mums, Tez. <laughs> Mum, Tez. Yes. Hi, Ricky. Thank you so much. I have three questions. If you're OK with that, please. Your your session in uh, I think it's Alabama on the February. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do hands-on social media or how does that work? Do I do I'm what? Canada. I'm from Canada, by the way. Do you do hands-on social media or how does your workshops work? Hands? Oh, hands-on. Hands hands-on for social media? Yeah. Is that what you said? Hands-on for social yes. media? Yes, okay. So I, the, listen, the workshops are going to be an interactive. They're maxed out at 100 people. And we're, you're going to be working with the other uh, people in, in the workshop. Right. They're going to be grouped up. There's going to be exercises and, and we're going to be um, working through how to communicate better. We're going to be working through social media, um, a lot of different things. So um, there will be it will be very, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Very small group, very intimate. Right. It's going to be your day. Right. Where you interrupt me at any point, questions on anything. You know, I want you to walk away from this feeling like you got every little bit of value and some. For whatever it is you're wanting to accomplish so yes i guess in so many words okay great thank you and my second question is i want to learn storytelling with data how do i do that storytelling with data with the data you present oh with data with data yeah, yeah. uh it's something you have to practice it's nothing that uh -huh. you're just going to get right so you just need to start um so are you gonna are you wanting to tell stories via social media or via written or via voice? Via voice and emails, preferably. And then okay. if I do social media, I would send them to my website. Okay. So so with you say voice and email, okay. Mm -hmm. So so that that is basically podcast and blogging. Because when oh, you write okay. an email telling a story, then that oh. could easily be turned into a blog as well. I right. Where, where, it, where it's a blog on on your on your website, as well as the email that you sent out, which is super important for SEO. And so if you're writing the email anyway, you need to convert that into a blog on your website as well. 
Okay. But then, but then do a podcast as well, you know, like record yourself talking about whatever the story is behind the data. Um, and, and listen, your, your first one may be a little rocky, right? But the second one will be a little better. The third one will be a little better. The fourth one will be a little better. You just have to start. I see. Is yeah. there a book or something I could refer to, to do that? I don't know if one as far as like storytelling with data. Mm -hmm. um, now, this one that I'm reading, that I'm going to read, the second book I'm going to read of the year is called Building a Story Brand. Yes. This is about building a story around you. Okay. Um, clarify your message so your so so customers will listen. This right. I don't I haven't read this yet. This is the one I'm reading after the one I'm reading now, which is called Pitch Anything. Um, this could be this could be something for you, you know, story brand. That could help you tell better stories around the data. Okay, thank you. And my last question is, how do we invest with you if we wanted to invest with you? Because you said you do that for people. And if what? We invest with you. Oh, invest? invest. Once, I, once I have the property, then um, stay tuned. <laughs> I haven't I haven't I haven't found a property yet that I want that I want to um that I want to you know um give you guys the opportunity to invest with me on. And and I'm a Canadian. So, can I do that? Because you're American. I'm Canadian. Sure. Is it possible you, absolutely, to do that? you absolutely can. Okay, great. Well, I'd be interested in that. Because okay. I invest in Toronto myself. I have rental properties, uh, mainly condos, but not um, apartment buildings. But I would yeah. like to do something with you if that's possible. It's 100% possible. Thank you. Thank you so, so just, much for everything. Absolutely. Um, somebody just said with the address of the Alabama event, it's going to be at the Clubhouse of Craft Farms Golf Course. Okay. Gulf George is really small. So it's not like, you know, I'm going to do it in LA and it could be like an hour away. Gulf Shores is literally like 10 minutes from one side to the next. So um, you don't have to worry about if you're in Gulf Shores or Orange Beach, you're close enough. Let's see. Okay, guys, I'm seeing um, questions about the events. Go to zero to diamond.com backslash events. That'll tell you everything about the events. Great. Tony. Thank you, thank you you're so much. You're so welcome. Hey, Ricky. Uh, first, I want to thank you for your content uh i started taking listings that um i guess are too high i guess uh and i just got one uh by owner last week because yeah. i just wanted to list it and figure it out as it goes uh mm -hmm. but uh as far as a question i plan on moving markets so i was just curious like what your what you would do if you were to move from like gulf shores to let's just say like Chicago or so, just anywhere, I guess, what you would do in my shoes, I guess. And well, how far are you moving away? Probably San Antonio from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And why are you moving? Um, long story short, family issues, nothing on my end, just I need, so a, fresh, just, I need a fresh start. So it's just something honest. you have to do, basically. Yeah, yep. Because my first advice where I was going with that is, is if you don't have to, don't do it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> if you, yeah, you don't have, have to, to you know? yeah, if you don't to, have to, don't do it because starting over, you're basically a new agent again, right? Yep. And you know, it takes agents normally six months to get to their first deal. Same thing is going to be for you in the new market. I don't care how great of an agent you are. It's going to take you about six months to get to your first deal in the new market. You're new again. You're going to be brand new. You're all the momentum that you built is lost. And you're going to have to start over from scratch to build that brand, build your name, get to know people, learn the lay of the land, and really build that infrastructure and foundation so that you can build the type of business you have now. And that's really a lot of work. So I don't wish that on anyone. So, it's, you know, step one is, do we really have to? Okay. Next, the next step is, if we do really have to, have to, the way that I advise people on this is that um, since it does take six months on average to get to that first deal, and, and I don't. You can tell me all day you're going to sell something quicker, but I, I've seen it over and over and over again. Um, it That's what it is. Um, and so even if you get a quick deal, it's only going to be one pop. It's not going to be like deals every month. Um, but if 
the way that I, since it's six months, what I advise is to really crush the market you're in now till the day you leave. Because you want to build up so much momentum in that current market that you have deals literally closing during those six months from your last market to carry you through that six month law. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, so that's the first that's the first thing to wrap your head around. And that means making the calls and following up and really pushing hard, hard, hard. OK, but you guys know that my perfect daily routine for an agent is to make calls all morning and do social media and marketing all afternoon. Right. So what I would do three to you know, or uh, what I would do like six to eight weeks out from you leaving is make calls in your current market in the morning till the day you leave. But then in the afternoon, start messing around on social media for the new market and search the area and start DMing, liking, commenting and engaging with people on Facebook and Instagram uh, that are that live in the new market you're moving to. And go ahead and start those conversations. Let them know you're an agent, you're moving from uh, Iowa to you know, San, Anto San Antonio, you say? Yeah, yep. I love San Antonio. But I'm moving to San Antonio, uh, you know, and I do real estate here. I'm just trying to get to know people. Like, be very vulnerable and honest with people. People love that, right? And you're going to create some connections there. And by the time you actually move there, like, look up the mayor, look up restaurant owners, look up, you know, everyday people and like spend an hour or two every day literally connecting with them on social media and let them know you're coming and you're going to be ready to help them. Um, you know, so that, that's kind of how I advise people to play that, you know, bust your current market as hard as you can to where you have deals lingering and closing during your transition period and go ahead and start trying to build a presence on social long before you actually get there and then start. And then you're just kind of like roll right into the routine, making calls all morning and social media all afternoon, um, busting through those, you know, those locals. Yeah. yeah. And then just grind 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 just start building rebuilding yeah and i i tech or i uh message on instagram but my son's finally getting better he's still in the NICU um mm. but he's making some progress and it's it's been hard a month and a half for us but but yeah thanks for for being there yeah man and you know when you're going through something like that dude it, it just adds all that extra pressure and everything um, there were times when I was going through, you know, let's just say life moments, you know, that are, you know, tough like that. And one thing that was always consistent through the hardest times was my weekly email. Uh, my weekly email never missed. And there were, there were like, there were times when I wasn't making any calls, you know, I was totally down on whatever it was going on. There were definitely moments like that. And, um, um uh you know that but that weekly email stay consistent so on the outside looking in my clients were thinking oh ricky 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 he's balling he's selling he's juking he's jiving right but on the inside over here in real life i wasn't so much you know what i mean so try to keep that try to keep that consistency with the email no matter what that's what's gonna keep that image that you need you don't want to lose that momentum, man. You don't want to lose that momentum. Yeah, it all. Oh, yeah. Everybody, there we go. Hey, good, good, um, good talking to you, bro, and good luck with that. And and just keep reaching out. And let me know what I could do to help. Thanks, Ricky. Sir, Sandy. Ron. Hey oh, there, sorry, Ricky. Ron. Sandy oh, came. Hey, Sandy. Yeah. Hey, sorry. Um, I have my camera off because I'm driving to an appointment, but I'm fairly new agent, four years in California, and I'm a dual career. So first career is teacher. I'm going to teach for two more years, um, but I'm really trying to turn up the volume on my business this year. I've, I've done well the last few years, just fear and deals that kind of came through my network of friends. Um, but I'm looking to really grow it into a machine. So okay. if I was going to spend $500 a month, where would you suggest I spend that to get the most bang for my buck? Red X. Okay. And any specific thing you would start to do first with that? 
I would do I would do Geoleads Plus. I would do Expireds Plus. I would do the multi line dialer, and I would do Ads Builder. Okay. And then the next question I have for you is: I currently am using my broker's website. I've been told over and over again, like start your own website, like kind of just detach from that because who knows where you'll be. Yeah. Um, what is one of the best companies that you can recommend for CRM and email campaign? Um, well, that's two different things, right? I mean, I know there's companies that do all of that, but yeah, it's hard. Two different. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard to uh, like the ones that I see that do everything aren't really good at all of it, right? They're kind of okay at all the stuff. And then, you know, there's people that just specialize in websites that are amazing, people that just specialize in CRMs that are amazing, people that just specialize in uh, email campaigns or whatever that are amazing. Um, and so it's hard to find an all in one, honestly. So, I mean, I use Webinate for my, um, for my custom website and then i use constant contacts for to do my weekly email but i don't do like i don't know what you mean by email campaigns like if if it's like a if you're talking about like like i custom build each email and send it out you know that's like my text met like everything that i do guys just so you know i i'm doing it right when you see a post on instagram i wrote the copy and posted it right then when you see an email i wrote it and sent it right then when you see a text I wrote it and sent it right then. Replies, all that stuff is me in real time. Um, and so I don't like set up a bunch of emails to go out automatically. Some people have these like 30 day and 60 day and 90 day email campaigns and all that stuff. I don't do that if that's what you're talking about. Um, no, I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about just a really good platform that's user friendly and reasonable and cost that I do now design my own emails and I send them out, but I'm using what's provided by my company, which, um, you know, I just want to establish all of my own and kind of have control over that. I'm paying for it. So I get to keep it as opposed to if I moved on, I lose it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, and that's really smart. So like for new agents, you kind of need to use whatever you can use for free. I'm going to put a link right here. Boom, right? That link right there, that's the link of my Instagram bio too, right? That takes you to all the events. That takes you to um, Red X discount. That takes you to constant contact to get my template for the weekly email. Um, um, Webinate, let me find that. Webinate right here. This is who did my Zero to Diamond website. This is who did my, my real estate website. Put it right there. You guys get discounts on all this stuff. Um, so you said, let's go back to the 500 for a second. Okay. Kind of brushed over it. Like for $500, like, you know, there's like team leaders spending a million dollars a year on Zillow leads. Like, it's nuts. Like for $500, you get Geo Leads Plus, which is 7,500 property owners of your choice, right? With a 10% pickup rate, that's 750 people you talked to that own the exact property you want. And that's like 120 bucks for 750 conversations with property owners, if you called them all. Um, then you got expireds. Go back 10 years worth, you got tens of thousands of expireds, withdrawals, canceled. And those are my favorite leads, by the way. And then you got the multi-line dialer to auto dial all these. Then ad builder. So Ad Builder, you make the Instagram and Facebook ads right there on the Red X platform, and they run the ads straight to your geo leads and your expires, where the people getting your phone calls are also seeing your ads on social. And you can put your past clients in there too and run the ads to them. Like, I don't know what else you would spend money on, honestly. If you guys know something better, more efficient, more effective that would expose yourself to more people digitally, social, phone calls, et cetera, I'm all ears. Ron. Thanks. Oh, Sandy, were you done? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Thanks for all of your advice. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, that's the key. It's, um... I'm from, I'm from South Africa and I've been following you for the last two months. Oh, nice to, nice to connect with you, brother. I'll be, I'll be, Laurent, I'll, 
I'll be in South Africa in October speaking at the private property uh, event. Okay. Um, I'll be there. They're flying We're in. Cape Town or Pretoria? What's that? Where will it be? Cape Town? I think it's in Johannesburg. Johannesburg. That's where it was this year. Yep. Oh, well, um, if, you can, if you can make it there, bro, I'd love to meet you in person. Um, I must probably be there. And you must make a turn in Cape Town to to experience uh, Table Mountain and all the lovely stuff. And I'm hoping to, man. I'm, hope, I'm planning on staying there for like 10 days. So I'm hoping to experience as much as I can of the country. And I, I don't mind taking you around in Cape Town. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah, my one question is what I want to put forward is uh, um, I'm busy building my network in Cape Town. And I would like to use some of your material through my mastermind groups. Would that be a problem? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. South That's... Africa is just a little different, right? No red X and stuff like that. But you guys do have, I forget what it's called, where you can look up the numbers. Um, it may be private. Pro Let's see. Which one was that? We've got uh, private property and uh, properties, uh, uh, private property and property 24. Property 24, let's see. I can't, I can't remember what platform it is that you guys can get the numbers for pretty cheap. But you guys should yep. be doing the same thing, right? Crushing the phone calls all morning and then crushing social media all afternoon. Uh, 100%. Then one of the things is what I've been following you is looking for the no's, not just the yeses. Mm, and, that's yeah. and that's working quite nicely because I'm, I'm, one, of the thing, one of the things is what I've learned from you is when you say, uh, look, I know you don't want to sell, but um, can I be your realtor and see how, and and let you know? And and that that works quite nicely because you you feel the 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 seller or the buyer feels part of the process. Yeah, 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 exactly, man. So as I was saying, like in the middle of my little presentation with the charge and the data, we got to quit going after listings and just start going after people. Yep, you know, people. I'm telling you, that's where it's at. That's where that's where it's at, guys. That's when your business really explodes and you start closing so many deals you don't you can hardly keep up. Going and, after and, listings, and, going after listings like actually slows your business down, ladies and gentlemen. And Ricky, you're 100 percent correct. It's like fences, and I just used one of your your ways of working with uh I, I drove past uh a potential uh, seller's property who's got a penthouse. And I said to him, is your property still for sale? He says, yeah, but I've listed it with two other agents. I said, yeah, but I've, I'm looking at the development you're taking, which is on the West Coast, and it's a lower income group. I've got an idea I would like to share with you. Would you, would you mind if I share it with you? He says, and he turned around to me, he says, yes, come through, because nobody's got the same way I'm thinking, because that's a market I want to penetrate. So I yeah. related to him. So it's three hundred units, which I'm going to start marketing. Yeah. But it's but but it's through the steps I follow what you put forward, mm -hmm. and those are the steps that works. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you for that. No, no, dude. I I um I'm humbled, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, a piece of my content has helped you, you know, have a better business, and you know um peace of mind really that, that's what this is guys it's a peace of mind right when, when you understand that this business will never stops and never goes to zero it's unlimited it's as much as you want as much as you want to work for um you have a peace of mind that you have job security forever and then nothing matters you walk into a listing appointment you don't care if you get the listing it's crazy it's crazy um is it cg biggie CG. hello ricky thank um, you for everything I have two questions. So okay. first of all, when are you coming to Canada? Uh, I'm trying to put something together. I honestly am. It's, um, you know, it's tough, but I'm, I honestly am trying to put something together. I, I bet. Thank you very much. Yeah. The second yeah. question is maybe a lot of people can relate to. It's my ninth year of real estate. I've been pretty successful. I have systems in place. Um, this is the first time in really nine years that I have no closings in the new year. I have few balls in the in the air but um i'm really a bit frightened and yeah. i'm just feel confused now if there are mm -hmm. two or three things out of everything you recommend you would do now to kind of recharge the business what would be those two or three things 
to do. Well, to I mean, li listen, I mean, okay. Well, there's a lot of things to think about, right? Number one, are our bills taken care of? Yeah. Okay, your your bills are taken care of, right? I, I have bills, but I've, I've I'm always putting money aside and do those things so mm -hmm. my bills are taken care of for the next. Your month. bills are yeah. fine, right? So you don't have anything to worry about there. Like your bills are fine. So um, the next thing is, is what are we doing that today? Are we making calls every day? Not now between Christmas and New Year's, but I'm trying to follow that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what about before Christmas? I, I did. Every day. See, so, see, like this, I said, see, I, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 this is see, guys, okay, guys. Time goes by, okay, and then we wake up one day, and we're either in financial trouble or we're financially well off. One or the other. There's no, there's no, we're in the same place. You're either going to be one or the other. Okay. Now your day to day. Okay. Your day to day looks no different there. All right. So like if you, if you one day made calls, right. Versus if you didn't make calls that day, your business doesn't look any different that day. Okay. So it's real easy not to make calls that day because that, that one call session is not going to change your business. It's not going to be a big difference in your business whatsoever. It could have been that one call that somebody bought, you know, $5 million worth from you, but let's take that off the table. It's not going to be that big of a deal if you miss one call session. Sure. But when you miss a call session, uh, uh, you know, three or four call sessions a week after three or four months, you're going to do that. That's when you wake up and you say, man, my business is suffering. I don't have any deals in the works. I don't have any listings. I don't have any prospects. I don't have any hot buyers or sellers. And so, but if you make the calls that whole time, you wake up and you have this very thriving business that's very, you know, robust and uh, plentiful. And there's just deals are raining from the sky and you got prospects calling you and everything's working and it feels like everything's spinning on all cylinders, right? And the day-to-day -day didn't look that different and your business didn't change that much day-to-day, -day, but you woke up one day and you're either financially hurting or financially well off, right? And it's the little things over time. Like you didn't get here all of a sudden. This is a this is a compounded uh, event that can, that's come from your lack of prospecting, right? Am I right? Yes. That's what it is, right? Um, and so what I want to see is a compounding event where your business is overloaded with buyers and sellers closing deals because you've made the calls every day. So what I want you guys to get out of this is that the uh like that one call session that you miss, it didn't mean a whole lot that day, but it means so much three months from now. That's the that's like the punchline. Because if you miss one call session, you're going to miss another call session. Then you're going to skip another one. It's like, oh, no big deal. I, I've already skipped three. Let me just skip four. And it just, you down spiral. And all, and all of a sudden you wake up and you have no business. And you're like, what happened? Well, I quit making calls. That's what happened. You know what I mean? So you got to get back on that train. So this is this is the turning point. This is the moment that you can wake up and say, you know what? Every single day matters that I make calls every single day and so when i wake up and i have a decision to make whether i make calls or not i need to make the calls because i don't want to end up in this situation again see what i'm saying and you have to yes. make, now 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 you have to regain the momentum right and now it's going to take three months of solid calls every day to get to the point where you've got some momentum and feel good about the direction of your business but if you don't go through that three months of solid calls or you give up three and a half weeks in or something like that, we're going to be right back where we are now. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Siggy. Yes, thank you. Was that it? Yeah, if it just I have a couple of deeds, I have a couple of listings, I have a couple of things coming, but nothing specific yet. And it's just, is there okay? Other... Okay, listen to me. Stop waiting on deals to happen. Mm -hmm. Now I, I got some things in the works. No, you don't. Those people could change their mind 
and never and ghost you. They could all your deals could ghost you right now that you think might happen could ghost you. Then what? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you very much. Don't ever depend on a deal. Um, Jeffers. Hey, Ricky, how's it going? Um, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I'm in the same boat as the other gentleman earlier. Um, I'm from Central Arkansas. I've been in real estate for two and a half years, and I've actually been the top producer of my firm the past two of those years, and I have my broker's license. And wanting to move you know, to Florida, I'm thinking South Florida to expand my market, um, I currently do about 12, 13 million a year, and that equates about 60 units here. Um, I know if you don't have to move, don't do it. But for personal growth and also being 23 years old, um, kind of want to get your input on, you know, I already got a, already got your input from the other guy on, you know, what to do to, you know, mm -hmm. get started in that new market. But I also wanted to ask, um, I have an opportunity to get my CCIM as well and didn't know what you thought about, you know, getting that commercial designation. Um, well, I don't know anything about it, number one. Um, you know, I know you don't need it to go sell commercial real estate. Um um, I mean, so I, I'm not really the one to ask about that. I've never been one that's uh, big on designations. I don't have any whatsoever, and I've never mm -hmm. tried to get any, and I don't care about them. I only care about one thing, helping people in the niche uh, real estate sector that I want to that I want to dominate in and getting to know and developing those relationships. So, um you know, I'm going to go gung ho to talk to people. If you're wanting to get into commercial, um, you know, you know, it's like what sector, you know, multifamily strip centers, um, you know, development properties. What is it? And then let me go find every single property under the market I want to dominate and talk to all of them. Right. Yeah. yeah. And see who I can really connect with and start building from there. I also want to collaborate with commercial brokers who are doing the same type of deals and try to learn from those people as much as I can and kind of. um squeeze as much information and data as I can out of them to try to learn how that game really works. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. And I guess, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, I, you know, for two and a half years and I feel like I do have a substantial amount of business. It's like a snowball. And I feel like if I don't leave now, you know, try to move into a new market just for personal reasons as well. Um, you know, get to a more lively area, I guess you'll say nothing bad about central Arkansas, but um, you know, there's a couple of different items wanted me to, you know, kind of grow in a new market. But um, my plan would be to have people here to handle my new constructions. I have a development here. I have uh, builders, I have rentals, my own flips, you know, but um you know, moving down there, it is kind of scary, like you said, especially with the more saturated market. Um, saturated market doesn't mean anything at all. Um, it creates a lot of opportunity. So, you know, walking into a market saying, oh, it's saturated, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot right there with a really yeah. um, bad mindset or bad, you know, uh, perception, um, perspective on what, what the situation is at hand right? Nobody has met you. Nobody has talked to you yet. Um, you know, it's going to come down to, do they connect with you as a person? They don't, I don't care about other agents, right? Every single person on planet earth could be an agent and it, it wouldn't matter to me. Um, you know, so get that out of your head, bro. Cause yeah. you're, it's kind of like, you're kind of already giving yourself excuses right off the bat. Of course. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's speed this up just a tad. Uh, not too much. I don't want to, you know, get too crazy with you guys, but um, not like a lightning round or anything, but definitely let's speed it up just a tad since we have so many people with their hands up and, you know, how long we've been on here already. Robert. Yeah, just a couple quick questions. Uh, I know you preach that you don't not preach, but you you state that you don't use a CRM. Um, and I know with the since going to EXP, they, they the KV core is included. Are you still not using uh, a CRM? I know you're just big on the, the weekly emails and and making phone well, calls. Well, listen, man. The thing is, is why would I use a CRM? All right? What do I need it for? That this is this is my point exactly, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Well, because I know like, <laughs> I get crickets every time I ask the question. Right. Well, I know that. I mean, everybody like all once you become an agent, man, you're getting emails like crazy on CRM. I don't really care about all that. I'm asking you, what do I need a CRM for? Like practically, practically speaking. Automation. Again, what's that? Automation. 
to, what, to, am I, to what am I what or, what am I automating? I guess it'd be just your email campaigns, but I guess you set that up on custom. I, I I created every week. That's why it went. Okay. Right when it when it's original content that I create out of my brain that week, um, based on either breaking news in the area or market data I want to share. I can't automate that, bro. Sure. And then I'm giving my two cents on that data to give them a little bit of Ricky within the email. That's the problem. We're sending out data, cold data with no opinions behind it. So they're getting that from like five different agents. If you want to stand out, you have to actually spend time on your content and give people real value behind the data, not just the data. And you can't do that automatically. You have to sit down and actually do it. But it takes me a whole whopping 15 minutes a week to do that. Right. And this is my baby. This is what allowed me to scale. Um, to where I was selling 100 properties a year, working five hours a week in my real estate business um, because of the weekly email and, and and because it was original content every week as opposed to something automated. So let's go back to the question, right? You what do I need it. a CRM for? You answered it 100%. You so, answered so, it. so you thought that you needed a CRM to automate emails? That's no, I just wanted to see. What, no, 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 no. Like I just what your opinion is on the CRM. I know, and yeah. I'm just curious if you, if you started using one since going with EXP because they could provide yeah. it with $89. Every, every brokerage offers a CRM. Sure. Okay. Every brokerage offers a CRM. The, um, I've said this before, you know, and listen, the people that use CRMs, like, awesome. That's your thing. It's not my thing. That's your, that, that, but that's your thing. That's great. I don't need to remember when their dog's birthday is. But while a lot of people are out there taking time to input data into their CRM, I'm close. I'm out here closing deals, right? While they're typing well, you, names into a CRM. Well, and I can you, you can type notes in, in, in that kind of stuff into your MLS. What do I need the notes for, good sir? To Again, it's guess, more yeah. it's more crickets. I don't need notes. I don't okay. need to know when their dog's birthday is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I got you. That, uh, you answered I mean, my question. Listen, dude, listen, listen, here, here's what people are trying to do with that. They're trying to create a situation where they can personalize the, 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 the conversations, right? Like if I remember that their daughter was going to graduate in like 10 months, I can call and congratulate that at that point. Right. Um, and that's a great way to build your business, by the way, to like personalize life events and send get like that is that's awesome. It there honestly, it's one of the best ways to do it. But I couldn't scale that. It wasn't scalable for me. Mm -hmm. So how did I give people the warm and fuzzies without doing any of that? And it's literally one word tone. Just the way that I talk to them like they're my mom, dad, brother, cousin. They had that feeling like, wow. And then like I would jump right on whatever it was they needed, you know, like handled whatever the situation was like they're my mom. And they're like, wow, this this dude cares about me. It's not about that. I remember that their daughter was graduating in 10 months. It was about how I handled whatever the situation is that they needed handled and how I talked to them in, 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 in this, you know, not caring if I get a deal attitude. Right. Literally just trying to learn more about them. So the fact of my genuine curiosity, Ixnays on the fact that I might need a CRM to remember the dog's birthday, because now it's all about for me how I talk to them, like they're my parents or something. You know what I mean? That's sure. what gives them the warm and fuzzy that a lot of people try to a lot of people try to uh, personalize the conversation around events that might happen in the future. And I'm trying to personalize the situation based on the way that I talk to them, just, just as if they're my family. And so yeah. guess what? My way allows me to scale faster because now I'm not having to remember all this stuff. I can just talk to people like they're my mom or dad and it does the same thing. Super efficient, super scalable. Think about the way that I operate guys. Weekly email, boom, scale it to the moon, dude. You can have like 50,000 people on an email. You're still only spending 15 minutes a week to touch everybody. All right. Fair enough, man. Fair cool. enough. Um, and then, yeah, just, I know, I know you're trying to get it, get it going quick here. You said the no designations. Uh, so I live near Coast Guard uh, Station in, in uh, National, like a um, 
National Guard base with a lot of people moving around and they get a lot of government government funded moves, transfers and stuff like that. And I had a client that, that they basically went with a, an agent that had a designation um, for, for government um, yeah. transfers and stuff like that. Yeah. I guess that's one deal. Don't, I mean, I, but if you want to hit that niche, it, would that be? I something? guess, man, I, my niche is people in my market, humans. Okay. All right. That's it. I don't care about that. You know what I mean? Right, right. Okay. I'm going to lose something else, then that you don't need a designation. Or don't Listen, worry about I'm that. Trying, I'm not trying to deter you from going to get a designation, just to be clear. Okay. Go get the designation. I'm not saying not to. I'm just saying Ricky is not going to. Okay. Okay. All right. And then, uh, uh, are you using a burst strategy when you get your properties, or are you go? Are you buying turnkey? It, uh, what's that? Turnkey or, or burst strategy? Are you buying uh, distressed properties, getting them fixed up, refinancing out? Um, no. Um, that's actually pretty ri That's actually pretty risky, right? It's like it's good for like a T-shirt, like a logo and stuff, but that's actually kind of a risky. So you're buying move. Turkey. Yeah. That, okay. That, okay. That's kind of a risky move, but um, I'm buying huge apartment complexes, man, 10, 20, okay. 30, 40, 50 million dollar buildings. So you're not buying. Okay. So that's a single family deal. Okay. Yeah. And then right, last question, as far as your, uh, if you're going to syndicate, are you looking for only accredited investors or are you going to be uh, put it out to, to everybody? I can really, I can really kind of go either way or I can go both honestly. Um, but I don't, I haven't really made a decision. I'm still mulling that over in my mind, you know, um, of how I want to play it out. You know, I, I may go strictly accredited, or I may, you know, do both. I, I hadn't really decided that, okay. honestly. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your time, man. This is, this is awesome stuff, man. For sure, man. Thanks. Is it Diane? It is. Hey, good morning or good afternoon. Good, now. good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, I am new to all of this and, um, and this is my first Zoom. So um, my question is, will you be coming to the West Coast? I'm putting yeah. together an event right now in Sacramento for uh, May. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's pretty much locked in. I'm just kind of working out the details and stuff. So, yes. Okay, that's um, number one. And then second, I have not owned a home now for five years. So I'm considered a first-time home buyer. Yeah. Um, I've been selling real estate for about five years. Um, yeah. So I have not purchased a rental. And and being that I would be considered a first time home buyer, what would you suggest I do to start? As if you were, I know you're doing multi. I'm I'm so not there to buy with my own money and. So you're um so you're renting right now. Um, no, um, we had family issues, so I live with my parents for the. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I, same advice. I would save up a down payment. I would go buy a cheap rental property. You know. When you're talking about a cheap rental property, are you talking about a two bedroom, one bath, three bedroom, two bath? What what do you what do you consider? I think it matters too much. A lot of people say, oh, well, three bedrooms is going to be high demand and this, that, and the other. I think all properties are high demand. Um, you know, I uh I've got my duplex, I've got a duplex that is a two bedroom, one bath on each side. Let's see, is it two bedroom? Yeah. Yeah, they're two bedroom, one baths on uh, on each side. Uh, they ran out like crazy. They ran out great. Um, but yeah, I, what I'm saying is, it's something you can afford, right? Okay. Something you can afford, something that doesn't need a lot of rehab on your first deal. You don't want to get into a deal where you have a lot of rehab on your first deal. You know, try to get into something that's fairly turnkey. You know, on your first deal, you know, just find the cheapest, smallest, best location you can, you know, that you feel really good about, um, you know, and just take the plunge. Okay. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Okay. iPhone SE, second generation. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, I'm Trinice from New York. How are you, Long Island? Oh, uh, doing just super well, super well. Good to see you. I uh, joined your 
your your service about three months ago. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> okay. But uh, thank you so much. Yes, again, you have changed. Even though I've only been a realtor for about three months, I did sell one house so far. So that's good. And I got a question and a comment. So I see you're using um, constant contacts for weekly emails. So I'm mm -hmm. doing that every Wednesday as well. Yeah. But I'm also wanting to set up the text messages because um, you know some people don't want to give out their emails. They say just stay in contact with my phone number. Yeah. So I see that you, because you send me text messages too. I see that you're using community.com. Right. So is that where I set up for text messages? Yeah, absolutely. You can absolutely use uh, community for that because now they have a feature. I haven't used it, but now they have a feature where you can actually input the uh, numbers. It used to be that they you had to um, they had to subscribe, basically text you and have their info. But now they have where you can input numbers. Now I don't know what the process is there. If they at that point have to agree to something, at that point I'm sure they do. But yeah, I mean, Constant Contacts also has it. You know, they also have the uh, texting feature. That's kind of what I've been. Um, that's kind of what I've been kind of pushing is you're already using constant contact for, um, for the email, you know, just add the, the, uh, SMS, you know, constant contact. That's why it's all on one platform. You can just text out the weekly email as well. Right. Right. I, uh, I, I did, I added that service on for, it's like, like $10 a month extra for like 500, um, text messages sent out. Mm -hmm. However, I worked through a brokerage, um, leading edge real estate services in Babylon, New York. Mm -hmm. Um, they want you to ask your employer, well, the brokerage for the EIN number, and then also something like, uh, their information for their tax yeah. forms, your brokers don't want to give out. So. I wanted to know how do you do that? I think you can use your own LLC though as well. Okay. You know, so if you have an LLC for your business, you can use that EIN and then use all your own, um, you know, tax information and all that stuff. You should have an L you should have an LLC. That's an S core anyway, S corp anyway, you know, for your real estate business. I mean, you should have that anyway. That's going to protect you on social security taxes and, um, you know, as you grow your business, you're going to want everything to be in through the LLC anyway. So something you want to do, but that's, you know, that's, that's what I would do. Go ahead and set up an LLC and kind of work it through there. Okay, great. And then also, um, I know you get your numbers through Red X, right? And like I said, I'm a real new realtor. So basically broke pockets here. <laughs> okay, um, well, I let found me, yeah, let, go ahead. I found that you can actually get free numbers and address information right through your MLS in New York through our service called Remind. Okay. Now, um, with that, that's been actually working out pretty well because I do the circle prospecting too, and you get thousands and thousands of numbers and you export that and you can get their property information, the owner's information and the names and all that with their email addresses as well. But you yeah. still got to call them. Or you could use their email, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so that's good. Um, definitely use that, right? Um, but um, somebody said something earlier about, oh, you know, it's going to cost 4000 a year for Red X and a Web and Aid or something like that. And um, listen, here's the thing, right? Um, you know, if you don't have money, right? Let me tell you something, okay? Door knock for sale by owners, social media open houses, networking events, sphere of influence, meeting people in public. The list goes on and on and on here of free ways to go out and build your business. Right. Completely free. And so people are like, oh, I don't have money for the, okay, are you knocking on doors? Right? Like if you pay for Red X, that's not going to magically turn you into a ambitiously hard worker and you're going to start go prospecting and stuff. It's not. Um, so anyway, just wanted to add one last thing. You're totally right. Um, I started with one contact for my weekly email about, what, two months ago. And now I'm up to almost over 100 people that said, yeah, we can keep in contact, you know, just in case you want to do something. So I cold call every almost every single day, about yeah. two to three hours a day. And the list just keeps building. So I just want to say yeah. thank you very much.
you're more than welcome, man. That's incredible. Hey, you're keep pushing incredible. and keep it. Huh? <laughs> you're incredible, Ricky. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> come come see yeah. me in Long Island. You coming to coming to the event? Yeah, I saw it already. Yeah. Okay. Get you a ticket and come see me. Definitely will. Thank you so right. much. Have a great yeah. day. And what can you. I do for you today? Um, just go out there and crush it, honestly. <laughs> just go out there and keep being you and keep making them calls and keep building that business. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, I really got to go in like just a second. I still, so we got, I don't know, 15 hands up or so. Um, let's do some serious lightning round type situation if I want to hit everybody. So Travis, go ahead. Just a quick pop. Uh, just real quick. I was going to add, you mentioned about the texting. Uh, a lot of agents I know they sleep on this. WhatsApp is a great free platform for texting because you could do status updates on WhatsApp. Yeah. I've been in the business for 23 years. I met in Connecticut last year. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but I was telling you my whole platform was texting email. Yeah, I remember that. Very, I remember that. Yeah. My whole platform is just texting. I use Textedly for my closed clients that I've closed over the 25 years. But the WhatsApp I really use on a day to day, I send out maybe five or six status updates. And just from that last week, I got two new listings. I have nine closing scheduled for three weeks. And uh, it, WhatsApp, man, it's really, really effective because a lot of internationals use WhatsApp for international free phone calls and texting. And if you look at the most popular uh, social networks in 2022, Facebook was number one, YouTube yeah. was number two, and uh, WhatsApp was number three, and it's still owned by Facebook. So when you put yeah. a status update on WhatsApp, it feeds over to Facebook automatically, which is pretty cool. Cool, bro. Thanks for the comment. Good to see you again. Yeah. Good to see you, man. You're going to be Sam. in a uh, long... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I muted you, man. I muted you. Go ahead and come back. No, no. January is Long Island for you? Yeah. January cool. 19th. Yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. Cool. Very Thank enough. you, bro. Thank you for the support. Hassan. What's up, Ricky? Hassan. <laughs> What's up, bro? Uh, just a quick question, man. Um, you know, I'm licensed in Jersey and I got my license in Florida as well. Uh, doing pretty well for myself. I finally, I left the team going on by myself. So I've been six months doing a lot of calls, a lot of follow-ups going to this year. Uh, my thing is, you know, my brokerage lets me have the New Jersey and Florida. And for me, I'm really trying to hit like a couple of deals in Florida. What would be your best way of how to designate your work from obviously my main business, Jersey, and then Florida too? Uh, what are you doing in Florida? You're, you live in Jersey. Mm -hmm. so what are you doing are you do you go there every six months yeah something? i could yeah i travel there every once in a while yeah i think i would have one market that i that i just absolutely is my like uh primary market that i crush mm -hmm. and then i wouldn't really mess with the other market i would just kind of take whatever comes my way in the other market yeah 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 so I, would I, decide which, I would decide which market is my primary that i really want to crush and focus 100 percent on and then you just kind of you're just open to do deals in the other market, you know? Like yeah, you're, you're yeah, that's open, what I've been doing. You, know, you might talk to a few people here or there and you're kind of open to do deals or if somebody wants to move from Jersey to Florida or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, but that's what I would do. I wouldn't really, yeah. I wouldn't really delicate like time block. Okay, I'm going to spend Tuesday on Florida, Wednesday on New Jersey. I would, you know, focus on one market. Jersey, yeah, because that's all. Because me just doing a lot of cold calls la uh, last year, what I found is like obviously Jersey to Florida, there's a you mm -hmm. know big retiree market. So me just getting on the phone, having just talking to people, usually lands in like okay, I'm moving to Florida. So mm -hmm. it kind of like starts to like I have family moving down there as well. So it's kind of like deals that are just coming little by little. So yeah, Understand. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the question, bro. Yeah. Thanks, boss. All right. All right. Okay, Stanley. And let's let's do it like literally like question answer question answer. Very quickly, I said a few uh, months ago. Um, I'm about to start doing cold call a few hours a day, and my biggest fear is listing presentation uh, because I don't have any. So that's uh, my question here on that. And before you answer this, though, I know you join the XP. Uh, you've been amazing. You don't promote yourself. Everything you said, you don't uh, do any promotion about anything. Try to sell anyone. Tell us about you turning AXP 
tell us how people can join you and how to improve what you are doing currently because you've been amazing man and um yeah i'd love to hear you talk about you at exme and how people can join you vxv it's not really a focus of mine as far as growing that's why you guys don't see me talking about it on social and stuff like that i'm more focused on helping as many agents as possible and getting into the um, syndication business and buying these big apartment complexes and stuff like that. Um, but I do spend a lot of time with my group that's, you know, part of my EXP organization. And we do coaching calls, a lot of one-on-ones, a lot of group stuff. And I pour in, uh, pour into that group as much as possible um, and, and some, right? So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Anybody that's interested in that, like I say, I don't talk about it and I'm not you know, because recruiting is really at the bottom of my list. Um, but if somebody's interested in joining me on that platform, I'm more than happy to have the conversation, you know, with someone that can message me on Instagram or whatever. I'm happy to connect. Was that it, Stanley? Oh, oh and my listing about pres- listing. Listing presentation, man. Like, I want to know why they're selling. I want to know, um, uh, you know, it, you know, if they have an agent and all this stuff, but when I go to the listing appointment, it's really focused more on them and why they're selling. And I try to, I don't have a presentation, bro, because if I showed it, if my mom was trying to sell her property, then, um, you know, I wouldn't give, I wouldn't show her a listing presentation. Oh, well, these people need convincing you're the agent to go with. Yeah. Well, showing them with a, a presentation, and a horse and pony show, um, which is what the next agent is going to show them as well, is not going to be the way to win them over. The way to win them over is talking to them like they're your family. Um, and then understanding why they're trying to sell and really relate on that. But in, in my folder that I bring, I just bring up uh, the comps, a listing agreement, a gift card to a restaurant. That's it. Uh, I'm just trying to have a conversation with them. And then once I understand why they're selling, then that gives me the direction I need to go in with my comps to help them price the property accordingly. Um, and, and again, why they're selling factors into how I'm going to price the property. Um, once I have all that data and I can sit down and really map out a plan of how they're going to accomplish what they're going to accomplish, that's my listing presentation, right? Mapping out that custom built plan based on why they want to sell, right? So it's just about treating my family, dude. I don't have a presentation if that's what you're looking for. You might have to go to one of those paid coaches or um you know old school you know brokers or something for that i appreciate your answer thank you is it renata renata oh hi um good after morning here in in vancouver bc canada um Yes, I've been um, a realtor for the past 13 years, and um, it, it's been super easy. I've had lots of referrals coming to me. They're just to help people and give them information, and it's never really felt like a struggle. This year has been a lot different, uh, whereas, you know, I've made the phone calls, I've sent out the emails, and it's just things just didn't seem to come together. So based on that, <laughs> maybe top three things to do to get back on track. <laughs> Um, you say you're making the calls, you did the postcards, you did all this, did all that, and it's not working. I mean, I could do them more, but, um, in terms of uh, phone calls and, um, newsletters and just communicating with past mm-hmm. clients, those things. So it's gotta be something different. Cause like you said, you've got into a slump yeah. before that I am. I think, I think, I think what it is, is that it's not that, you know, cause, cause conversations are the only thing that leads to closings. Okay. So if you're having the conversations, but it's not leading to relationships that manifest into closings, then we have to go back to the conversation and see, okay, what's going on here? Because there's a there's a breakdown in communication between you and the prospect, right? That's causing something where the connection is not there. You're not connecting somehow, some way. So as long as you're having conversations, then that should lead to business. But if you're having the conversations that have a high frequency and you're not having the conversions, then we have to look and see what those conversations look like. And, you know, what what is it like your the intention, like your intentions on the inside may be different than what's communicated and you don't even know it. You could be coming across as desperate, but you don't even realize that you think it's going great, but they're thinking, oh, my God, get let's, how do I get out of this conversation? I don't know. I'm not there. 
but I'm just saying this. Don't say that the phone calls aren't working and that call and pass clients isn't working and that all these I'm having all these conversations and nothing's working. I need to go try something else. What else is there? Right? What else is there? Nothing. Um, when it comes to, you know, building business, conversations king. It's the highest level of building your business past, you know, whatever the infrastructure is to stay in touch with people after the fact. So are you doing the weekly email? The email. I should change it to weekly for, for sure. And you're doing have what? More. You're doing what? Um, monthly email. Okay. Why, why is that? Um, it's just a uh, preset um, in the in the database that it goes out monthly, but I also send out holiday greetings. And um, what I'm saying though, why why not a weekly email that brings oh, value? Will. It's a two weekly email now for sure. I'm going to follow your system, do your sixty yeah. day plan. It'll get me back on track. What, where I was going with that, guys, was that if you're doing a monthly email, you're going to lose clients to guys that are doing guys or girls that are doing a weekly email. Because they're seeing that agent more frequently and they, they're they associating them with a harder worker, a more consistent worker, a more dependable worker than somebody that sends out a monthly email. And and then if the, if the email isn't customized around your opinions and thoughts on the market and stuff, then again, you're going to lose to somebody who is giving that custom personal experience. Um, but yeah, listen, it, I think it's going to come down to you ironing out your communication skills i don't know what's going on on the back end there on the inside but there's some there's something going on there that uh you know that needs to be ironed out honestly yeah i don't know what it is because i'm not there thank you for that okay honestly let's how, how can we make this a lightning round guys because i'm literally going to have to cut you guys off in just a second seriously justin He's okay. muted. Josh. Ricky. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, Rick, man, uh, some more of your investor content. Uh, uh, are you planning to uh, bring that to uh, the Zero to Diamond platform this year? I don't know. I thought about uh, making a course on it in the courses section, but I hadn't oh, really. Please fully... do, dude. Please do, dude. Like, I'm crushing it out here with the investors, dude. Like, uh, we need some more uh, content like that, bro. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm at, I'm opening the conversation, you know, on these platforms and in these forums. So I'm definitely going to be pushing the conversation. I don't know if I want to make like a course around it, um, but I might. I haven't fully decided. But thank you for the uh, push. Uh, Sylvia or Justin, did you figure out your mute? There we go. So five new people a day. I'm walking around from my, my office, talking to people. What's the best simple script for everybody to get their email? Tell them I can, I've got a weekly email for real estate and mortgage. How would I, how would I get that conversation going? I don't know, man. I think it's uh, like everybody wants a magic script that's going to give them the confidence to go up to somebody and talk to them. And honestly, it's just, you need to start just going up to people and talking to them. Right. And, and one thing like, uh, like I heard a strategy one time, it was like, um, give a compliment and ask a question. Right. I like your shoes. Where'd you get them? Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are nice shoes. Where'd you get them? Um, give a nice compliment, ask a question is a nice little conversation starter, you know, like in public and stuff like that. I thought that was really sharp, but, uh, it just depends, man. Like, um, there's, um, there's extroverts and introverts and extroverts are just, they're just conversation starters naturally. Right. And, and us introverts aren't, so it isn't so natural. We kind of want to hide and stuff. Um, but like, are you talking about in public at the grocery store? Or are you talking about on a phone, on a cold call? Are you talking about 
I was I was most you know thinking you know local businesses mm -hmm. in the area to my office. They're all property owners. Most of them they're easier to talk to than than approaching people mm -hmm. door knocking. Um, I just think business owners are a good source to to network with, and it's an easy thing to do. I don't know, man. Business owners like cool. Like how you doing? Like I don't know if we've met. I'm you know my name's Ricky. I'm I'm a local real estate agent. My office is right there. I don't know if we've ever talked before. I wanted to come over here and introduce myself and see how you guys are doing. See how business was. See what they Got say. Got see, it. What they should, see what they say. Got you it. Know? If they're business people, then they're going to get in. They're going to engage into that conversation with you. Right. And then, and then, you know, um, you go back and forth and they're going to, those are easy emails to get business people because they, they want to do business, right? They're business people. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Sylvia. You there? Sylvia. Can't hear you. Hello? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. I don't know why. Keep on working on that. I'm going to go to somebody else, but just keep working on it. Is it Shira? Hey, hi, Ricky. Hey. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you so much for your knowledge, first of all. And I can see that you're really like done. So I don't want to take too much of your time, but your opinion is very important to me and your advice. Um, I bought a property, an investment property in 2011, and I'm renting it out. In January of this year, I was thinking of pulling out the cash and because I have a full equity in it, 100%, and buying a second property. Uh -huh. Interest rates was very low. Prices were very high. Uh -huh. I do spend on some of the income. So the last minute, I kind of changed my mind. Okay. And I'm kind of regretting it a little bit. Okay. What They were only going to give me 65% of my equity, so I wasn't sure if I can purchase anything, and I didn't want to hold on to all the money. Uh -huh. What are you thinking? Like, what do you think right now? I'm thinking of getting out of my comfort zone to grow. What would you do? Would you still go for it? With well, interest you take, well, when you take out 65%, the rent on the property is going to still cash flow the property, even with the 65% taken out, right? With the new debt. So the rent was going to cover the more uh, the payments. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I was going to have still a little bit more left. But now with interest rate being higher, I think it's going to probably cover and mm. looking at the chart that you put up okay. earlier. Well, just for the sake of time here, um, like generally speaking, you know, you can take that money's tax free when you take it out. Right. Okay. If, if, if the rent is taking is is paying that note and giving you cash flow on top of the note. Right. right? There's no reason why you shouldn't take that that money out um, and let that property continue to pay for itself and have that money sitting in it. You can have that cash sitting in, a, in an interest bearing account, a CD or an or a money market account or something drawing interest on top like you you could have that money drawing interest while the property's paying the interest on the notes while you're waiting to find a deal to buy with the money so your advice is go for it right now too i would i mean i mean you know you can always wait and find the property and then you know, refi at the same time as you're buying the property. You can always do that. I mean, chances are really high, as we've talked about, that um, interest rates are going to come down, you know? Um, so I feel really strongly about that. So, you know, you can buy some time right now while you're kind of trying to look for a property, but I wouldn't wait too long. Right, because the property value is probably starting to go yeah. down. So my best bet is right now. I got you. Um, okay. The only reason, to be honest, that I kind of like was a little nervous is because I do depend on some of the income that comes in for myself. I understand. You know? well, maybe that'll maybe that'll help you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. But if you okay. need guys, and if I don't answer something, like feel free to hit me on Instagram. You guys know I answer all my questions there. Caleb, literally, you got five seconds. Ricky, Red X. I did it a month ago. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so I'm a land broker up here in the upstate of South Carolina. 
Mm -hmm. and you push me to do it. I put it on an Excel sheet, put it in. 95% of these people I've already talked to, but they're on the do not call list. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, like generally speaking, you know, ask your lawyer. I'm not going to give legal advice and all that stuff. All I can say is, is that I call them. Okay. Because I know that I've already talked to them and I'm just, I already have an established relationship, but Red X says it's do not call. So I don't know if they flag your file or what. No, nothing happens. Okay. Thank you. Daniel. Hey, Ricky, uh, real quick. So going back to what you said on that CRM that um, you don't follow up with, with people, you know, finding out when their dog's birthday is and stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when, when you're putting your weekly email, you're pretty much just doing that to the point where you want these people to contact you when they're ready, not so yeah. much to follow up in yeah. six months or half the time. Exactly. I want to create a machine that just produces, just spits out people that are ready to buy and sell. People used to say, okay. why are you why are you putting all the closed sales on the on the weekly email? You know, don't you want them to have to contact you for that? I'm like, no, I want them to contact me when when they're ready to buy or sell something. Gotcha. Yeah, because I'm using follow up boss and why local and I send seller alerts uh, for valuations yep. every month. You can do, you can do that through your MLS. You can do uh you can set up automatic uh, emails to go out through MLS uh, properties in their subdivision. Yeah, but what Yloco does is it, it it tracks every single analytics, how, how many times they open it, um, how many times they're coming how back. How many so, times they open it? How many times? That, what are you going to do with that data? I feel like it kind of rises the cream to the top. I mean, you see people more active that are ready to transact now. You're going to see, you're going to know who to call. I think that's a good marketing day. tactic for Yloco. I mean, that, listen, do you think that's a good marketing pitch for Yloco? What oh, you're getting the see data, you know, so buyer services. Listen, data is king. I love data, right? Um, it, that's useless. I mean, all data is useful to a certain point. Okay. I'm not going to say it's totally useless, but I don't even pay attention to who opens my weekly email at all. I don't really care. They're going to call me when they're ready to do something. Until then, bro, I'm going to be following up with people that have been calling me ready to do something. I'm too busy showing property, going to listing appointments, negotiating deals to look and see who opened up their YLOPO report. And then maybe they're hot because they open, they are, they're opening it frequently. Maybe they're just really interested in what's going on. They're not really interested in doing anything. They just want to see data. Well, dude. Okay, so in that sense, when you're doing your weeklies, do you send out any video content out there to just to, so people can build rapport with you, visually see you rather than just a text? I don't. Um, you can do that on social media and stuff. I like just images and uh, and text on the email personally. So for us to copy your weekly email, is that getting posted? Is it up now, or or do we have to wait for you to post it and then we get alerted? On it? weekly email yes um so i've been posting let's see if i can find it here because i went um, to the link you posted earlier and and it said um to come back later or wasn't available yet i don't know what i don't know what you're talking about but um i can put this link right here this has the last six weeks of uh of my email and i'm actually adding I'm actually adding it every week. So I'm hoping right here on this link that I can just like add every week and eventually have like, you know, 50, 60 weeks worth of the email that people can go and look at. And that link right there, there's six of them now and I'll add it every, I'll add one every week. When I do them, I'll add the link there. Okay. Appreciate it, Ricky. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for your time. Happy new year. And all I can say is everything that you post on social media, it's super high motivating to me because as markets change, it creates doubt, even for anybody that's been in the business for years. Um, when you say, when you go up there and you say stuff, I, I just want to say it's very valuable to me and it, it means a lot. And I'm sure the rest of the group can agree with, with that. I appreciate that, bro. Happy New Year. Play. Hey, Ricky, thanks for everything. Um, my struggle is I make, I'll make the calls, right? It's then I feel like I need to follow up with them again on the phone to build more rapport. Okay. That's the, 
I think that has um, hurt me a bit. I'm not doing the weekly email that I see is going to be incredibly valuable. So, so you would, so you would, you would call them to follow up, but you won't do weekly email. So you want to do something that's totally not scalable, but not do something that is hundred percent scalable. Yeah. The weekly email needs to happen. I've got them on some other emails, but that needs to happen. Period. Okay. Uh, second thing, your past clients, do you try to call them once, twice a year? Uh, Cause I think that's like you said, the referral business is huge. Yeah, if you can. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not begging guys for referrals. Those right. No, referrals. just no, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, they get my weekly email. Like, I don't know what else, like it does all the heavy lifting for you. You know what I mean? Put your faith in it, you know? Um, and it's not going to get everybody, but it's going to create a situation where if you listen, guys, if you go all in on the, on the scalable activities, then your business will scale. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, like the weekly email is going to continue those relationships. If I'm spending time on my email to make it very personable, mm -hmm. really show them who I am through that email, it's going to do its job where I don't have to call people all the time and check on them and stuff. They'll call me when they're ready to buy or sell. Yeah, I love and, that. And, that's actually and, maybe, and maybe they'll go use another agent. That's fine. No, there's yeah. no system, guys, that's going to capture 100% of everybody. Yeah. So then you have to think, okay, what system do I want to put in place that's going to give me the highest percentage possible? Yeah. And the one thing I, uh, at least I remember seeing a couple of times on your weekly email that you sent out just for us to take a look at is at that bottom, like you said, uh, call me today or whenever I can help you buy or sell. It's just like, when you're ready, I'm ready. And then I guess that's kind of sealing. I'll continue to be here every week until that time comes. Thank you. Bro. Thank you, bro. Uh, is it Daniel or do we already see Daniel? Daniel's already been gone, right? Daniel's gone. Let's see. Jonathan. Hey, Ricky. So uh, real quick, where do you get your information for your weekly emails, like your stats and stuff and all that stuff? MLS. Just, just MLS. Just okay. MLS? Yeah, MLS. And then I can also Google. Like what market are you in? I'm in Long Island. Where? Long Island. Long Island real estate stats. Redfin, you got the Redfin data, of course, but let's go to more something a little more specific. Let's see. Here's data here, Long Island. Look at this. Long Island data for November 2020, right? 2022. Uh, medium price, medium home, close sales activity. This is the number. This is going... November, October. I mean, it's going. It's showing you the percentage change month over month. Like I just, I just found this in two seconds, bro. Mm -hmm. And you can literally turn this data right here. This is a one page, just boom, right there. I could turn that into a weekly email and tell a story on this, and then throw a little story about a showing I did and what a buyer said one day, right? Um, let's see, let's see, let's do, let's do. That was the second link. Here is the first link. So much data, so much data. It's just like data galore, data galore, right? Here's some links. Here's some links. Uh, this is ridiculous, you know? So I can Google, but I'm going to use my MLS as well. I'm going to create my own data, tell my own stories, what I think, what I'm seeing. But also I can, you know, search the internet and find all kinds of other places too. Okay. Thank you. Oh, absolutely, bro. See you in February, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. Oh, and are you coming to Gulf Shores? Yeah, I'm coming. Oh, my God. Let's go, bro. <laughs> Can't wait to see you, man. Robert. Yeah, Ricky. So my question is, um, walk me through real quick. Just uh, when you're cold calling, cold calling, you grab a lead, you put it into your Excel spreadsheet, and then from there it goes into your email blast. Am I correct? So no, 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 no database. I don't put any, I don't have a spreadsheet. Um, I only use the Google sheet if they're ready to buy or sell in the next six months. Got it. So where do you keep that track to send out to your emails? To send the weekly emails? Yeah. 
Constant in other words, contact. if I get a lead, where do I put it? Oh, constant contact. Got it. Yeah, and the, if, if you, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah, any lead, like whether they want to buy or sell today or 10 years from now or never, they grow on in my constant contact to get the weekly email. And then if they want to buy or sell something in six months, I'm going to put them on a spreadsheet to kind of keep up with them from there. Got it. Um, are you, you um, are you doing any mailers or no, no postcards whatsoever? I used to. I used to spend five Gs a month on uh, postcards, but it really wasn't a high ROI compared to the weekly email. So right. you know, at, at that, you know, once the email started to produce like 98% of my business, I was like, I'm not going to spend five grand a month to, you know, on the 2% of my business that I get, you know, it wasn't, you know, and the weekly email cost me, you know, nothing basically to send versus five grand a month, you know, which yeah, doesn't make yeah. sense anymore. That's where I'm at. That I'm teetering whether just to drop the postcards or not. Um, digital, man. E listen, email, Facebook, Instagram, you know, go digital. Got it, brother. Thank you very much, man. Have a great All day. Right. Sylvia, stand by one second. I got to change my battery out here. Hold on one second. Sylvia, are you there? Robert. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, we're no, we're already talked, brother. Oh, we're done. Uh, let's see, Elvis, you got five seconds. Hey, brother. So um, I went through a struggle last year trying to figure out, you know, what to say, how to say it, sales skills, and build all that. It built a lot of like uh, anxiety. And coming back to you after after a while, they're like, man, like this is just the way to do it. You know, you got to build conversations, build relationships with people. And so um, here I am now getting ready to get started. What's your point? And I mean, your your perspective in regards to wearing suits every day and, and being I mean, it's 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 fine mentally. Right. You know, it's fine for me. You look professional and I'm in the L.A. area, by the way. So what's your what's your point, you know, with, uh, regarding the dress? I don't know, dude. That that's a good one. I always contemplate like, am I am I screwing up, you know, by being so casual all the time? I think about that, you know. Um, um, you know, I, I really do. I don't know. Um, I don't think I'm the best <laughs> to talk to about about this, honestly, because I'm super casual. Like I got flip flops and shorts on right now, you know. Um the market too, your market too, right? I mean it yeah, no, no, no. I, yeah, like, it, it, you know, like different markets are different and stuff like that. Um, you know, that that definitely plays into it. But then like, I see like YouTubers like wearing suits on YouTube, right? And I'm, you know, um, but I, I think I think it I think it comes more down to like, um, who you are, right? And trying to portray yourself for who you are. Um, and, and so that's what I've always done. It's just, I'm just me, you know, like love it or hate it. You know, I'm going to you know, wear board shorts and, you know, flip flops and I'm going to go out, sell everybody. Right. So it comes down to me for based on who I am, but then there's, there, there is something to be said for perception of others, you know, that you're big business and stuff. I, I don't know, man. I honestly, I'm not the one to talk to about that. Yeah. Hello. All right. Cool, man. Appreciate it. I, I, I say do what makes you feel good, man. What makes you feel comfortable. And um, and the biggest thing I'll leave you with on it is try not to care whatsoever what other people think. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Bro. <laughs> Mark. Hello. OK. OK. Sylvia, you're back. Oh, thank I'm gonna you. I'm going to get Sylvia <laughs> and then I'm going to get Mark and then we're out of here. Go ahead, Sylvia. Thank you very much for having me. I have two questions, please. The first one is, when is one ready to have um, their own independent brokerage? And my second question is, um, if you have your own independent uh, brokerage and you have a question, who do you tend to, please? Well, I mean, honestly, um, 
I wouldn't wish anybody to have an independent brokerage because it's a lot of work for nothing. Basically, you lose <laughs> most independent brokerages, you know, brokers lose money and they spend a lot of time on stuff that doesn't make them any money. It's not very efficient unless you're going to build it out. You have like this grand vision to expand and franchise and, you know, you know, go all over the state or go all over the southeast or even nationwide. Um, to actually yes. build like a, you know, a billion dollar corporation and have a board of directors, maybe one day go public and all that stuff, then, you know, I'm not, you know, that, but if you're going to have one individual independent brokerage, yes. um, you know, I'm not a big fan of that business model, mm -hmm. um, honestly, but who do you go to? You go to the, um, the real estate commission. If you have questions, you can go to the real estate commission of your state. And uh, they'll be glad to answer any kind of questions you have, you know, regarding any of that. But I would say if you're to the point where you don't, where you still have a lot of questions, then maybe it's not time to take that, take that leap. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mark, for our last question of the day. Hi, Ricky. How are you? Good. Uh, just last question, please. Uh, do you recommend any uh, speed dialer system? Um, anybody want to put it in the comments? <laughs> like, yeah. Are you me, using one? Yes. Yes. Red X has it. Let me put a link here. This will save you 150 bucks. What you want to get is geo leads, um, expireds, uh, the storm or the multi-line dialer and ad builder. That's what I would get. And I would just crush social media on there. All the property owners would know who I was. I would utilize the dialer, so on and so forth. Does it serve Canada? Oh, you're in Canada? Yeah. Um, so you can still use the auto dialer and the ad builder, but they don't do geo leads up there. So you have to do telelisting to get the to get the phone numbers, but then you can just upload them to Red X to dial them. So with oh. Red X, just get the multi-line dialer and get Ad Builder, and then get your numbers from Telelisting, import them to Red X to dial them, and then you can run ads to those people as well through the Ad Builder. Okay, thank you very much. Cool, man. All right, guys, this is a two hour and 12 minute session. Can you believe it? I can't. Because I only blocked out an hour for this. <laughs> so um, I didn't realize we were gonna, it was gonna go on like that. I figured there'd be a couple questions and but a bing, but a boom. So um, thank you guys for spending some time with me on this uh, beautiful first work day of the year and looking forward to an incredible year. I hope you got a lot out of this. Let me know if you have any questions, anything I do to help you. Looking forward to seeing you guys at my next event and the next time I go live on whatever platform. Um, yeah. No, it's uh, it's exciting, honestly. So let me know how you guys are doing. Keep pushing, keep me informed, and we'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Love you guys. Bye-bye.